and welcome to this episode of Kennedy Saves the World. Joining me today, my friend who doesn't drink a lot. So I made her a very <laughs> tiny drink. Emily Austin is back. Um, here's your teeny tiny baby. Thank you. Of course, it's a mocktail margarita. L'chaim. L'chaim. Cheers. Norok. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> that is not to be shot. That it's is to, to be, be sipped. Sipped. Yes. S- sipped. That's the first I've ever had on I, a happy I, I must, you know, every time I go out with friends, I'm just like, I, I cannot stand the taste of alcohol. It's like something's wrong with me. Not even the fanciest wines or the sweetest yeah. things, like maybe a Moscow mule, you yeah. know? Yeah. When it's when it's know. shielded by sugar, so much sugar. fruit juice. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, it's basically a mocktail. I love I used to call them sorority drinks, but now I call them tiki drinks. Tiki drinks? Like that's I a cute love name. tiki drinks because they're colorful and bright yeah. and fun and they feel like vacation. And they <laughs> have like, so much fruit juice and so much and booze. calories yeah, and sugar. Exactly. You can't yeah. eat for two days right. because you're drinking your calories exactly. if you're going to a tiki bar. Um so you went to Saudi Arabia for the big Boxing night. Yeah, that was awesome. By the way, I'm going back Stop December it. 21st. What are you the doing? Rematch. Oh, it's the rematch. No, it's already this year. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I didn't think they were going to fight again this year. That was I, a crazy fight. Yeah, it was wild. So, you know, as the as the reporter, I, I wasn't a reporter. I was the broadcaster. You're not, like, allowed to bet on the fights. Mm-hmm. But me and Ryan Garcia did make a bet on the fight. A side bet. Right. We it's were just, like, official. on the sidelines. I'm like, Fury's going to knock him out, right? And he's like, yeah, absolutely he will. Hey, we were wrong. I yeah. mean, Usyk ends up winning by Usyk decision. Usyk is a tough bastard. I just never understood the whole, like, in heavyweight boxing, my brain can't comprehend the fact that a little guy could beat a big guy. Mm-hmm. Just scientifically, it's not making sense to me. Because Fury literally is, like, three feet taller I than I mean, Usyk. the height and reach advantage is crazy. <laughs> but he won. Yeah. It was like David and Goliath. Yeah. But there was no sling. And it was it was closer than a lot of people thought. Yeah. But once, you know, Usyk took to- so many shots to the head... And I was like, yeah. he's going to go down. And, you know, if you're and just like smiling, like, like, yeah. I'm f***ing around. Do you think he was screwing around too much? Yes and no. I'd like to say yes, but he wasn't. I mean, look at Ryan Garcia. He was doing like the Fortnite dance in mm-hmm. Barclay Center and he won Haney. Um, I think it's part of it. I feel like if, if almost it's like if you Is convince Ryan Garcia yourself. Garcia the guy everybody hates? He's the one that just tested positive for drugs for allegedly performance enhancing drugs in Florida. Allegedly. And then him and Clarissa yes. Shield just got into some beef right now, which was so random, by the way. She tweeted he was positive for drugs. He wrote back, shut up, lesbian, make me a sandwich. Oh they God. get into it. I was like, yeah, Whoa. That's, that's why people don't like him. Like, that's, that's where crazy. he goes. That's not even humorous at some point. I think in his mind it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little tiny mind. Right. Um, so did you wear your Star of David in Saudi Arabia? No. Okay, that was my Mm-mm. question. I was thinking about you today. I was like, you know, she is a friend of Israel. You've gone to okay, Israel. Okay, let me cry. I did. It was tucked in, though. Okay. Um, like a special shield? I probably can't share. It was just like, I, I, so I dressed very, very modestly. Like, yeah. everything was covered. So okay. I wore, like, a high thing, and I tucked it in. Let's just say there were conversations about Israel, and it was not known that I was the Jew in the room, and they mm-hmm. were very unpleasant conversations not just amongst like the locals but even the fight and then everything surrounding it and i was like at the table i was part of the it was like a 30 person dinner and was there anyone there who knew your background who was uncomfortable on your behalf looking at you like no question mark so ryan actually knew Mm -hmm. because i just can't i flew tel aviv abu dhabi Riyadh. there's no flights from israel to saudi and um, I didn't post, obviously, anything about Israel while I was there. But a lot of people were following me on Instagram throughout the fight week. And I was like, wow, it's going to be so fun for them when they stalk me and they see I just received an award in Israel. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were like, wait, wait, wait. Are you a Jew? Like, a Jew. And I was like, <laughs> the, you're like, I'm the Jew, baby. And I was like, I took out my star. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, what? It's their kryptonite. You're like, la, 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 la. Yeah. You're one of them. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was, wow. Yeah. Um, if I'm being honest, it didn't bother me that much because I was treated the same way after I was treated like royalty, honestly, mm-hmm. like everyone, once they knew I was the Jew, nothing mm-hmm. changed. Like I thought it would, mm-hmm. um, I have to say they were surprised, which was upsetting. Like 
to say you're not one of them or you don't look like a Jew or you don't act like a Jew. And I ask them, what does a Jew act like? What does yeah. a Jew, blah, blah, blah. And they give me like the Kanye West narrative. <laughs> it's sad. And then they go, but what you're cool. Con- what is the Kanye West narrative? You guys screw everyone over in business. Mm-hmm. You guys are all scumbags. Mm-hmm. You guys all are cheaters. You run the world. You're the, oh, I heard we were the Illuminati. Oh, that's exciting. I was like, exciting. no one asked me to join. Yeah. Like, why wasn't I asked? Does that get you into Soho House? <laughs> yeah apparently you have to like sacrifice a family member all these crazy things and i'm like i mean as long as it's an annoying one i don't know maybe <laughs> i think they said it has to be your favorite so that's exciting you're going back yeah so you've been doing nba commentary for a few years now and that's really where you made your name for yourself yeah i know we see you on gutfeld and various other shows on Fox, and I'm always very proud of you. I met Thank you last you. year at Freedom Fest because yeah. I know you love freedom. Are you going again this year? I'm going. I'm awesome. emceeing oh, in sick. Vegas. I will be there at the Mirage July thir- or 10th through the 13th, so hopefully you'll be there. Let's see. I have to make a choice. Oh, my God. Freedom Fest. Don't kill me. So Freedom Fest is the same week as... I'll help you make uh, the choice. Freedom Fest. Always choose freedom. Yeah. I want to see you. Yeah. There's a fight in Philadelphia. I was like... Philadelphia, they punch horses there, and you're going to a much better Yeah, but better they're fight punching December. humans in the ring. I, I say come to Vegas. Yeah. We'll start a fight. It'll be fun. <laughs> Can we fight? Can we do that? That's cute. <laughs> yeah. Fox edition. Yes. That's right. That would be fun. But you uh, have you always been a boxing fan? I know you have an incredible knowledge of basketball and other sports, and it's always fun to talk about sports with you because you always have a great... <laughs> perspective it's well informed but kind of gossipy which it's I always love. gossipy yes. i will always sh- like with zero shame admit that the gossip is my favorite part of the sports like <laughs> if you know me i can't lie about it you see that in every interview it's, it could be the most serious interview and i'll be like so you said that your opponent cheated what did you mean by that and i'll always try to extract the tea mm-hmm. now boxing on the other hand i started during COVID, I was in college i think second year into celebrity boxing and congratulations you recently graduated and gave a speech. Thanks. Yes. I'm surprised there were more protesters, but I'm glad. Thank you. Um, boxing was always fun for me. It wasn't like super duper serious. So when I was a sophomore, I did the Bryce Hall Austin McBroom fight, like mm-hmm. battle of the TikTokers. It was really unserious. Um, the next fight I did was it was like battle of the running backs, Le'Veon Bell, Adrian Peterson, mm-hmm. battle of the rappers. It was Blueface who was arrested or something. So they swapped him last minute, and. It was always casual boxing. Now, when I realized I wanted to work for the zone, mm-hmm. then I'd started to like study boxing. So I'd watch the old Tyson fights, okay. the classic of Andrew Holyfields and the the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya's. And like I, I studied it just so I could, you know, I think history genuinely repeats itself. So sports is not for the sure. exception. And you see like common themes and that made it easier to be able to do like the social broadcast. And- well, that, that's what's really cool about boxing. I mean, I, I think it's the one thing that, that draws people back to it over and over again. It is so pure. There's so little involved. Yeah. That it means that it's really hard to change it over time. Right. And, you know, it's like what it takes to be good at it isn't too dissimilar from eras in the past. Mm-hmm. And and that's why people look back and save our big fights and champions from decades ago. I know. Because you can still see their toughness. But, like, obviously technology has changed in hockey and baseball and, yeah. and football and you know, it's it's very, very different now, and, and players and all these sports are a little bit more protected, but not so in boxing. I guess, you know, the gloves are more padded. I don't even think so. Like, if you, I, I've seen some old gloves. I see them being auctioned, and, like, I feel them. But I feel like boxing is, is very consistent. What makes it exciting is, like, the new matchups. And honestly, rematches are always fun. Like, yes. I can't wait for the Fury-Usyk rematch because this time I would – I would say Fury is going to take it, but let's mm-hmm. see. I was overly confident in Riyadh last time. Um, and honestly, and there's no lack of gossip. I mean, yeah, technology changed. I don't think that affected boxing, but now there's like steroids and enhancement drugs. And mm-hmm. and do they test for that as rigorously as they do in other sports? I, I'd say arguably more. Okay. Because in this one, it's like weight is taken into account. I don't think in any other sport they care about weight this much. Um, so much so like they monitor how much water they drink. Yes. Um yeah, they, they drug test a lot because it's obviously not fair if someone's on steroids. This is a this is a strength battle. It's it's yeah, or obviously diuretics scale. the days before right. weigh in. There's actually some things that are allowed. Apparently, IVs are not allowed. That was news to me. Interesting. Like hydrating IVs. Oh, just hydrating because yeah. I I imagine there's a lot. There's like you a can capacity in an IV. Yeah. Like when I go on an international flight, I go to the doctor and get an IV. Really, it's pretty great. That's a good strategy. Yeah. Is that my phone? It's not my phone. My phone is right here. Hello, no one. That's a phone that I have. I'm like, 
exposing myself here. Phone? It's like if someone doesn't like, like if I don't want someone to have my number. <laughs> so that's the so one that's that rings all the time. I don't want to talk to. Because you give that to most people. They're, like <laughs> when someone asks you what's your number and you don't want to be confrontational, you just yeah. give them like a fake number. Who's the most famous person in your good phone? Ooh, depends what category. Sports. Which category? NBA or soccer. Ugh. Oh, Mbappe. Okay, nice. Obviously, yeah. soccer is like But huge. his number's in your phone. You yeah. have Mbappe's number. I WhatsApped him. I tried to get him to <laughs> say something about Israel. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> didn't work, but I tried. If Mbappe was like, Emily, I love you. Come marry me in France. What would you say? Um, No. If there is, if, <laughs> if one person proposed to you, who could you not say no to? That we know. Ooh. Not like Jeff from high school, because no one knows yeah, Jeff. Yeah, no, no, and the, no. People from high school wish. Okay. No, there's <laughs> one person I know I'm obsessed with. Why can't I think of it? You know, growing up, this is so stupid, and, like, I don't get the appeal. It was Liam Hemsworth. Oh, I was obsessed with I totally with him. understand that appeal. Yeah, but that was, like, I think like, both of them are, like, lovely. Then I had a bad bunny phase, a okay. really huge bad bunny phase. Mm-hmm. Got over that, too. Hmm. Who would I marry right now? Like I'm shooting my shot. I have to like think wisely. Shoot your shot. Don't go anywhere. More Kennedy saves the world right after this. I don't wisely. know. Can you give me suggestions? Um, Who would you marry right now? I, well, I would. I would marry my sexy teenage boyfriend. Ah. Um, he's the only one I would marry. Um, but like celeb version. The celeb version? Yeah. <sighs> Probably Rupert Murdoch. He just got married. Well, there goes my shot. <laughs> like, literally a couple of weeks ago. Shot it, now it's done. I'm sure there are other old, old men. I just think that that would be, like, a great one. Iconic. Yeah. That would yeah. be iconic. That would be, what a match. I'll get back to you. Okay. I'll DM you. Okay. And then, when I'm talking about another subject on another day. By the way, Emily said her <laughs> marriage pass would be... What about I a really pro golfer? I don't even know golfers. I know Tiger Woods. Not Rory McIlroy. Okay, I know by name. I don't even know what he looks like. Oh, he's so ordinary. Really? Yeah, and he's a jerk. Hmm. He's a jerk for I, so I never reasons. watched... I can't watch golf, yeah. and I can't play it. I could drive, like, in the driving range. Well, that's a very important part of the game. But that's that's the only fun it's very part. difficult. Really? Yeah. I just backhand. I mean, putting is tough. Rory McIlroy blew two putts this last weekend. Was and there a big tournament? He was in the lead, and wow. he blew... Against who? Uh, Bryson DeChambeau, and he blew the whole thing. I was, it was sad. Are you gonna watch the Wimbledon? Yeah, I love the Wimbledon. I want to go so bad. I love the tennis. I, I watch tennis. the French Open. I'll watch the U.S. Open, mm-hmm. and I will watch the Wimbledon. I think tennis is amazing. It's I fun to am watch. in awe of all athletes. I, I really do love watching sports. Same because they, it's the consistency that just kills me. It's so See, impressive. I feel like anyone could be pretty good. At any one thing, mm-hmm. at one moment, yeah, but not for a long period of time and not on demand. It's so motivating to watch sports. Like I, I had an epiphany in Riyadh that was short lived, but I, I started again yesterday. Hence why I'm sore today. When you watch an athlete just on their day to day life, how disciplined they are, mm-hmm. you can't help but to respect them. You don't have to like them as a person, but you owe them a certain level of respect because they earned that. Oh yeah. Um, like in Riyadh, some of the boxers, they were running outdoors in 120 degree Fahrenheit weather Jesus. with a sweatsuit on because they had an upcoming fight to train okay. for. Like they watch everything they put in their mouth for, for their fight prep. They don't drink, no drugs, like dedication. They don't mm-hmm. screw around. Like when they're in it, they're in it. And that's something that like I could diet for a month and do well and then I'll break it. And then yeah. I'll diet again and I'll break it. They like they're ripped. They're physically well, mentally. And a lot of them have CTE. But, like, it's very motivating. Yeah, and it's it's not just narcissism. I'm sure that, <laughs> that's a factor. It is a huge one. Yeah, but it's like not you can look that. good and not do that to that level. I, I do the same thing with triathletes. Mm-hmm. Like, I follow a lot of triathletes because I want to see their training. I want to see what their yeah. kick looks like in a group run. I want to see, you know, it's like what do they do? What does it look like when they're just in the pool yeah f-ing around exactly and it's always i mean it, it's so wildly impressive because on the run and the swim professional triathletes are wow. literally twice as fast as i am and i'm like what would it be like if i could swim twice as fast as That's i am wild. now it would be incredible i don't even get how you run i ask this to a lot of people and they laugh at me i can't run it's really hard to start running no not it's even like smoking start. it's hard to start smoking really it's, uh, running's the same way but i can't do it i don't know how y'all breathe it's it's really like, like I very can't breathe. Start. Like 
when I first started running in high school, well, I ran when I was in elementary school. Wow. And then I didn't until like the end of high school. And then I'm like, I'm going to try this again. And I could run like 100 yards. But when people casually are like, yeah, I ran 16 miles today. Yeah. I can't run no, from my block to the end of the that. block. I, I ran two hours last weekend. That's insane. And that was that's because on my schedule, there's a long run. But my long runs are slow. They're meant to be low heart rate. How long do you think? Base. Like if I start running today, mm-hmm. let's say my goal is to run two miles a day, which is like really low. Yeah. How long would it take me to be able to do that? I mean, realistically, think? I would take a month to do that, to go from zero to two miles. Really? You know, just to baby yourself. I'd do some cross training. Make sure you're doing like little foot stretches and <laughs> strengthening exercises because it's real easy to blow out your feet. I just signed up for Mayweather boxing. I'm so oh, excited. that's great! I am so excited. I know I'm gonna. Is it die. all defensive? It's all. <laughs> is it? No, I don't think so. Because he's known as the greatest defensive fighter of all oh. time. <laughs> no, there's literally one opening down the block from my house, and I was like, you know what? Like. I just turned 23. I have no excuse to not be in, like, my peak shape right now. Yeah. But I hate working out. But boxing seems like it's fun. My peak shape was 39. I mean, you're still in amazing sure. shape. But, like, that was as far as, like, cardiovascular and just, you know, it's like m- my body looked better, obviously, when I was in my early 20s because you don't have to do anything. But I was 39 and was training for my first half Ironman. I'm like, screw it. I'm going for it. Yeah. And w- Would you, you do know. boxing? Yeah, I love boxing. I boxed for... A long time with, uh, I had girlfriends and we would go to Times Square Boxing when Times oh. Square was a dump back in the early, <laughs> early 90s. And it was, I mean, it was a piss hole. This is before Giuliani. And we mm. used to go to this gym that had no air conditioning and spit nice. buckets. Wow. And super ripped dudes who didn't care about us at all. They were not impressed. And, and we would go and we would learn to box. We'd learn the fundamentals. And it was months and months before they would let us spar. And really? It, three rounds of sparring is the most exhausting thing I've ever done. Huh. Way more exhausting than running a marathon. Or no a triathlon. Way. Yes. That's a hot take. More than a marathon? Yep. And I did grit boxing. Um, that was really cool because it's it's kind of like high interval cross training. So it's like the, you know, the heavy bag is only one round and then you do kind of strength and treadmill. And then you go to circuits. That was awesome. That's I think what Mayweather is gonna do. It didn't open yet. But when I walked in, there was a treadmill, there were weights, and then yeah. there were, like, those big bags. I'm going to die, man. I don't know how I'm going to do that. That that one was tough, but not so tough that were you, you felt ripped? gassed. W- was like, that does that rip? make you ripped? Yeah, that'll make you ripped because you're doing strength at the same yeah. time. It's like cardio will only take you so far. Catch me next time. Catch me at Freedom Fest. I'm not going to say six-pack with a four-pack. Dude, that's... That, it's, it's like three any, weeks away. Any pack is phenomenal. <laughs> A and- one pack, just one one cube. It's like a little extra chub on the side. <laughs> I'm working on a bagel. Yeah, doing real good. Um, well, I I say go to Vegas. Let's go to Freedom Fest. Let's make our mark so the world will never forget. Never, never. It's gonna be life changing. Freedom above all, Emily Austin. You're right. You're right. All right. Fine. I'm sold. All right. Here's to happy hour and margaritas oh, with God. no alcohol. Wink. Just a sip. Hmm. This has been Kennedy Saves the World, along with Emily Austin. She loves it. I'm Kennedy. Listen ad-free with a Fox News Podcast Plus subscription on Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Prime members can listen to this show ad-free on the Amazon Music app. Oh, go ahead and leave me a review while you're there. I'd love to hear what you have to say. You've been listening to Kennedy Saves the World on the Fox News Podcast Network.